Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit of ways how HTML5 in particular is changing what you can accomplish on a, on a mobile phone. So the web is evolving in a couple of different ways. Um, you know, the first generations of HTML was really about document presentation. and How do I lay out long documents, structure them, style them, make sure that they're accessible no matter what you are. But HTML5, which is the next generation, was really started as a way of saying, hey, you know, HTML4 and CSS2 is awesome for documents. You know, we've pretty much nailed the presentation of documents everywhere. What we're interested in is making the web into an application platform. So let's work on things that allow us to build applications. And applications generally mean more structured data than just a document. It means structured interactions. Um, an application, you can't quite define it, but you know it when you see it. <laughs> So the web is evolving really from documents to applications um, on the mobile web, uh, from declarative HTML, which is basically here's content and sort of here's what the structure means and here's how it should be styled, into more of a richer object model. And this was something that um, was pointed out way, way, way at the beginning of the, um, of the web, actually by Microsoft, which said, you know, the web, not that interesting, doesn't have a real object model. Uh, no one's going to switch from COM um, and COM plus to the web uh, because you can't program it. Well, you actually can program it now. Uh, from templates, so I, the idea of having um, structured semantic markup that you just drop new content in to uh, actual application programming inter interfaces. From URLs to arguments, so from a naive um, uh, uh, REST model where everything's sort of in a static hierarchy into more of a, hey, I want this response and here's parameters that are, I want this resource, here's the parameters that I'm going to give that resource. Uh, from requests to response to more of a synchronization model and fundamentally from a thin client to more of a thick client model. And this is all being carried out by what we call HTML5. Uh, and HTML5 is, uh, for want of a better term, what people are calling this next generation of technologies that are arriving um, that have arrived in desktop browsers and mobile browsers over the last um, three years. It includes the core HTML5 spec, the CSS3 working group uh, technologies, some associated technologies like geolocation, device access, um, some server technologies like server sent events, web sockets, etc. Um, and for want of a better term, that is what the, uh, the brand has become. HTML5 got started um, back in 2004 when the previous attempt to build a set of rich technologies for the web based on XML and SVG and SMIL and XForms and XPath and all the X star stuff basically collapsed under its own weight. Um, the standards got very obtruse. It was difficult for web developers to consume them. None of the browser manufacturers wanted to, to implement them. SVG today is only now getting implemented properly. Um, so you know, finally arrived in IE9 um, this year. And the browser manufacturer sort of stopped, uh, stepped back and said, this is not working. And particularly Ian Hickson sort of led the schism uh, to form a new working group outside the W3C that said, you know, if anyone's actually seriously interested in building a set of technologies that um, allow us to build web applications, come give me a call. And that, that resulted in a collaboration between Mozilla, and Google and Apple um, and others um, to redo um, the standards track direction to make a set of technologies that would be friendlier to web developers, easier for browser makers uh, to implement, and fundamentally would allow you to do neat stuff in the browser. And they've been pretty busy. Um, uh, and <laughs> there's been a lot of new stuff put into the browsers uh, over the last um, two or three years. And often um, it can look like you're looking at a big bowl of rubber bands. There's so many standards documents at different stages of completion. Uh, there's so many blog posts that are done that are, that are outdated and not maintained. So I'm here to make it a little bit easier for you to uh, consume. Fundamentally, there's sort of eight categories of stuff 
that's coming in HTML5. And this is courtesy of the, uh, I think the Chrome team, um, who uh, put together or sponsored uh, a lot of this um, work. Semantics. So the idea that you can mark up a document with tags that mean something. It's not just a paragraph. It's not just a um, text span. It's actually, this is an article. This is a section. This is a header. This is a footer. I want you to style them differently. I want you to treat them differently. I want you to parse them differently based on what the actual content um, of it means. And this is the part of HTML5 that's really intended for uh, magazines and for structured content. Offline and storage, the ability to actually disconnect, unplug your Ethernet cable, turn off your uh, airport, and still have your application work. Uh, device access, the ability to access things like compass, location, create your own file system uh, for your application. <laughs> Connectivity. Multimedia, so a set of technologies that allow you to do vector graphics, bitmap graphics, um, audio and video without the need for plugins, audio and video elements that can actually be styled with CSS, moved around, positioned. Uh, there's not just a static frame inside your web page that you have to deal with. Very cool stuff. Uh, 3D graphics, so WebGL, uh, effects, reflections, filters, um, distortions, anything you want to do is somewhere in the grab bag of HTML5 uh, effects. Uh, performance and integration, and then a huge grab bag of stuff in CSS3 styling, everything from drop shadows to text strokes to um, masks and gradients. What it gives us is essentially a new mobile app stack. So everyone's familiar with the core of HTML, HTML for structure, CSS for styling, JavaScript for behavior, but beyond that, a whole set of new stuff. So web fonts, the ability to dynamically insert new fonts into a page, even if it's not on the system that you're serving um, a font to. This is a, a massive advance uh, in font technology. We've been you know, looking for this for the last uh, 12 years. Uh, we've finally gotten over a lot of the font licensing issues that uh, stopped this from occurring in the first place. Most of you have probably heard about HTML5 video, HTML5 audio, um, graphics, a whole bunch of stuff inside graphics. Uh, the ability to create your own file systems, your own databases, your own application caches for your applications that are protected for and sandboxed for your domains. Uh, the ability to spawn off new worker threads in JavaScript to um, parallel process stuff. Cross-app messaging, the ability to actually post messages from one frame or one window to another under appropriate application um, permissions. This is something you couldn't do before. Um, you know, every page uh, was an island. A whole bunch of device access stuff. And uh, this is happening faster than, than I thought. You know, we now have uh, orientation and gyroscope access uh, on iOS. So you can um, detect from JavaScript whether you're upside down or not. Um, handy just in case your semicircular canals are not working. Um, Camera access just came in, um, in in Honeycomb, so now you can um, trigger a photo upload from um, a file upload box in a web page. Then a whole bunch of server and services stuff. So everything from WebSockets, which is the ability to basically bootstrap into new protocols out of HTTP and not have to uh, keep connections open to the backend server. Um, server sent events that allow Theoretically, your mobile phone to go to sleep and be woken up by a notification uh, from the web, uh, as well as uh, many, many more things. What does it all add up to? I mean, when you look at this, this is kind of what you expect. These are the boxes that you expect from any application platform, right? When you look at the Dalvik boxes on the Android side, you'll see something that sort of looks like this. Right? It's, a, it's sort of everything you need to build an application. So what it gives you is basically rich media, styling, full resource access, parallel processing, interapp communications, full offline capability. When you have those up, it's basically what you expect from a, a complete modern application platform. It's not just for showing documents anymore. It's for doing apps. So I'm just going to give you a quick example of um, some apps built in HTML5 using Sensei Touch that allow you to duplicate native experiences um, using JavaScript, CSS3, 
and um, HTML. So all these components are built um, using iOS and sometimes WebKit specific text because we're on iOS. We can implement overlays, we can implement persistent storage, we can implement popovers, all get managed correctly by iOS and the web browser. We can save things to uh, local state. We can duplicate traditional mobile uh, user interface widgets like tab bars, toolbars. It's all styleable, it's all themable. We can also do things like detect geolocation or detect your location and have the application do things based on that location. Standard user interface components, nested lists, scrollable lists, bounce physics, rich gradients, styling, forms. A lot of this wasn't easy, <laughs> uh, but and that's a little CSS3 animation at the end. Uh, looks a little bit like Flash, but it's not. Uh, these are the types of things you can do uh, just using CSS uh, styling. This is the Vimeo Festival Awards. Again, the ability to do rich transitions, fades, multiple layers inside your applications, rich event handling and bubbling, integrated map resources, uh, this is a Google map. So I think just from that 45 second minute demo, you can see that you can actually build experiences with the web technologies that are on anything from actually iPhone 3 yeah, up to the latest BlackBerry Torch that can give you native-like experiences. That can be different for each phone. You, know, you don't have to make it look like an iOS phone. You can theme it completely differently just with CSS. Michael, are you taking questions now? Uh, sure, yeah, I can. So uh, my question was, uh, so if you're using HTML5, now you're basically, what you can do on each device is now tied to what functionality is supported by the browser on that device. Yeah, so the question is, uh, if you're using HTML5, are you tied to the technologies that are available on that browser? Um, that is the case. Uh, I do have a kind of a cross-browser comparison chart in a second. It'll show you that basically all the stuff that you need um, is there from Android 2.1 on, on Android, from iPhone 3 on, uh, on um, iOS, uh, sorry, iPhone 3 uh, on iOS, and from um, the BlackBerry Torch, so OS 6 on BlackBerry. Um, and we hope, you know, when IE9, when IE9 Mobile shows up on Nokia, we'll have pretty much the same uh, bag of tricks that we can use. It, it might be using some IE specific things, like instead of CSS gradients, it might be filters. Um, but you know, we've we've been able to duplicate the behavior cross platform, and, and that sort of leads into the fact that. You know, there are enough quirks cross-platform that you do need cross-browser abstractions if you're going to keep your sanity. Uh, just the same way that everyone you know, will use frameworks today on the desktop to keep their sanity from IE6 through to you know, Chrome 10. Okay. So um, I'm not claiming, though, that you know, the mobile web can do everything today. Um, you can't write Angry Birds. Um, you can't write uh, Cityville even uh, in you know, using mobile web technologies. Uh, the CPUs aren't fast enough. The GPUs aren't accelerated enough. But for everything other than action games and very rich graphics, um, you can pretty much do it. Browser support. Um, so there are a class of browsers that you had just um, and devices that you need to ignore if you're going to do these rich kinds of experiences. Um, so you know, BlackBerry 4 feature phones. Um, there, uh, you know, the S60, you know, Symbian. Uh, doesn't support these kind of rich interactions, mostly because none of them are particularly good at JavaScript. Uh, device access. The so device access is um, basically arriving, but it's not fully there yet. You know, for example, you can't just um, get Bluetooth access you know, from a web page today. Uh, discoverability. 
So app stores are coming for HTML, but you know if you if you have a consumer app today, um, particularly if it's a good 